September 5th, 2018. That was the start of my journey, the very first day, which led me here to this moment on September 5th, 2018. At the very beginning of this school year, I joined Quest with four wonderful teachers and 28 students. On September 5th, I entered a program called Quest BC, a program which taught you through experiences and a program with the goal to create kinder, more courageous and curious people, something which inspired the very reason why I'm here today. And one of the things they did besides taking us on these great adventures like hiking through the Rockies or sailing through the Gulf Islands or even building igloos to sleep in is that they took us to a climate change conference called Connect the Links. And over those two very long days of sitting in a warehouse and seven-ish cups of coffee later, it became evident to me that there's a power in ideas, a power which connects people. Ideas, if powerful enough, can ignite the flame and motivate us to take action, to move, to reach out. That power becomes this energy which flows and touches the people around you, motivating them to take action as well. And the cycle begins again. When you work with many people as one, it enables you to do something greater, to be a part of something bigger. But it also became evident to me that this doesn't happen very often. That people share these wonderful ideas and truths, but once they're out of the environment, they cease to be engaged or motivated by these ideas. You go back home and you go back to your daily lives and nothing has changed. I seek to change that. It's the difference between collaborative and passive action. Passive action is hearing, maybe, maybe even reiterating that information, but collaborative action is taking that idea and running with it. There is a power in ideas, and even greater power when you make them a reality. Power is simply the ability to engage and influence people to make a change. And I want to give that to my fellow youth. I want to give them a voice, let them feel that power, but even more, I want to challenge them to reach out and get involved because too often is our generation described as ignorant. But I seek to change that as well. I had this idea which came together in the form of a youth task force. A task force meant to mobilize and engage youth in the community, but it's more than that. The idea was to gather youth who wouldn't be afraid to roll up their sleeves, get their hands dirty, and do the gritty work. To be out there sandbagging during the floods or distributing supplies after the fires. It's to be a group of youth who wouldn't it's to be a group of youth who would react to the disasters within their communities and be the connecting link between the supplies and the people affected. To be the link between the goods and the community, but also to truly be there for the community. To be that listening ear to the family that just lost their home after yet another forest fire. To make sure the widow has all the resources she needs, all the help and support she needs to rebuild or even to just help rebuild the lawn which has been flooded for a single parent so their children have a yard to play in. Youth have been gifted with this abundance of strength and energy and I wish to hone that energy, redirect it towards engaging them within the community. Showing that youth can support their communities not only physically, but emotionally as well. This task force of youth goes so much further than that. They create a connection between the different generations and communities so they can learn from one another. This task force of youth would react to the forest fires and floods within their communities, but also be there in the wake to take care of the families and the people affected by these disasters. To be the connecting link between the goods and the people and make sure those goods got where they needed to go. Making sure the community, the widow, the family living in a temporary home and that struggling single parent get what they need. Even if that's just someone to listen to the experiences they just went through, letting these people tell their stories. Not only would this engage and involve the youth, but create a stronger community, bridging that gap between generations. This would also give youth the aptitude to learn from other generations and use their wisdom to create powerful ideas of their own. Bringing about a stronger, more connected community, a community of support. And of course, these communities need goods and supplies to fix their homes physically. But sometimes what a community needs, what that widow needs, what the family living without a permanent home and that struggling single parent needs, is just someone to hear them. People to say, you're not alone in this, and we're here to help you get through it. I want my task force of youth, guardians of the good, to be this. Now, the name was not so secretly inspired by the well-loved franchise, Guardians of the Galaxy, where, spoiler alert, instead of fighting aliens to save the galaxy, we are rolling up our sleeves, getting our hands dirty sandbagging and sorting goods, using our power, of youth, using our power as youth, uh, connecting with the inside of older generations to protect our communities. Although, Guardians of the Good is just an idea of mine. Ultimately, it's just an initiative to achieve my goal. My goal is to engage and involve youth in the community and to address the disconnect between generations. 
This task force is primarily made up of youth, and I know youth get pegged with the stereotype that they are self-absorbed, disinterested, and indifferent. But I find this not to be true. In fact, I find youth to be the most passionate people I know. They just need the space to express it. The basis of this stereotype is built on the disconnection between generations. Both sides feeling as neither side listens or understands. But as a youth, I can only attest to my own experiences. And as a youth, I find our generation's opinions and thoughts are often brushed to the side because of our age, because we haven't yet lived a life, and it's true. I can't possibly tell you what it feels like to buy my own house, to pay for taxes or manage bills or even get married and provide for my family. But what I can say, as a youth growing up, we are constantly told what to think and how to act as we are raised into people of the society. There are many great people in our lives trying to sculpt us into human beings, but they tend to forget we are already human beings. We are already capable of intellectual opinions and constructive thoughts. I mean, what I'm trying to say here is that I've been on this world for 17 years, 1.7 decades, and I have a few things to say about it. After all, I am doing a TED Talk. <laughs> Rarely are youth asked for their opinions or what they think should be done towards the future. <clears throat> creating that disconnection between generations. Now, I'm not saying go ask your child how to stabilize the economy or cast prices, but to simply ask them for their perspective. The conversation may surprise you or even inspire you, like my fellow youth doing these TED Talks today. Youth need to be given the space to form and voice their own ideas. They need to be given the chance to express themselves and take action. That being said, you guys don't just have stuff to learn from us. We still have plenty to learn from you. And I admit, I did not come up with Guardians of the Good alone. I developed this idea with a teacher of mine from Quest BC. His name was Michael Ross. And as he so eloquently put it, we are utilizing the power of youth, connecting with the wisdom of elders to combat natural disasters and social challenges. In my own words, I want to revolutionize participation. My main goal, and not just with my initiative, is to engage youth in the community and empower them to create ideas of their own. But most importantly, see that they do not have to do this alone. That they can lean on and learn from other generations, and those other generations can learn on and lean from, on the youth for help and support. The outcome of this would be more empathetic, inquisitive, and courageous people. At the beginning of this talk, I called for collaborative action for making ideas a reality. And I'm going to go with the cliche and the overused metaphor and say Rome was not built in a day. And it certainly was not built by one person. And just as Rome was not built alone, nor are great ideas. They're built through collaboration. My goal is to create a community which depends on each other, showing older generations that youth can support their communities, not only physically, but emotionally as well. That youth can use the wisdom from older generations and create powerful ideas of their own. That when generations lean on one another, they gain a better understanding and connection in which they can thrive, creating people with ideas and the motivation to act on them. But most importantly, also the support to use collaborative action, to make stronger, more well-rounded ideas, developing people who can see issues and know ways to deal with them. Youth who can take what they've learned from their communities, apply it to other aspects of their lives, creating strong and brilliant powers powerful ideas of their own. Building a community and environment which gives youth the resources and abilities and skills to take what they've learned, create an idea, and run with it together. Ideas that are powerful enough that when they leave and they go back home, they do something about it. Building this absolute connected community. Community where they can take their ideas and work on them together. This is collaborative action. Club of action is taking what you have learned, creating an idea, and running with it together. Now is not a time for passive action, for nodding and agreeing. Now is a time for collaborative action. This is my powerful idea. What is yours?